My name is Ankit Sorosia. I'm I work as a senior software engineer at Astronomer. I work in DAG authoring team and have also worked on implementing various uh, deferable or async operators for various providers uh, in Astronomer provider repository. So I have been using Airflow for more than a year now. That includes building data pipelines with Airflow and also contributing in Airflow as well. And part of what I bring to this talk was to share my experience with the community in writing deferable or async operators for various providers, its ecosystem, and various challenges around it. Before uh, that, let, let me talk uh, a bit more about me. So I'm pretty new to Airflow. I have started using Airflow since April 2021. Uh, I also try to contribute on Airflow in my free time. Uh, before this, uh, I had been leading engineering team across uh, multiple projects in healthcare and agriculture domain at Wadwani AI, which is a non-profit research institute developing AI solutions for social good. Prior to that, I had worked with multiple startups focused on AI via applications, uh, camera applications, SDKs, drone uh, data analysis, and I was also a founding engineer at a startup in home home improvement space where I worked on building web-based applications that leveraged classical ML models. So outside work, I love traveling, uh, cycling, uh, cooking, uh, watching random documentaries, and so on. Uh, originally, I am from Nepal, uh, but I work in India. Both Nepal and India are beautiful countries and I would love to encourage you to visit at some point. So more than that, now let's talk about this talk. So broadly, I have divided my talk uh, basically into five different sections. Uh, we will start with standard operators or traditional operators. We'll touch upon the issues around it. Next, we'll talk about the motivation for deferable operators and high level concepts around it. Then we'll deep dive into deferable operators. I'll also demo the code and the implementation for one of the deferable operators. Finally, we'll talk about various pitfalls and learning in the whole process for implementing the deferable operators. Now let's get started by talking about standard sensors and operators. Standard operators and sensors take up a full worker slot for the entire time they are running, uh, even if they are idle. So sensors have two types of mode, poke mode and a reschedule mode. So let me give you a scenario. Uh, let's imagine that you have 100 worker slots available to run the task, and you have 100 DAGs waiting on a sensor that are currently running, but idle. Then you cannot run anything else, right? Even though your entire FO cluster is essentially idle. Reschedule mode is used in order to avoid the situation when all the worker slots are reserved for the sensors. However, if you have hundreds of sensors running in parallel, you'll reach a certain limit. Uh, and even with the mode set to reschedule, you won't be able to trigger more uh, tasks. Now let's talk about other real world example. So traditionally, a task may submit a job to an external system. So in this case, you can see it is a Spark cluster, for an example. And then the post status of the job uh, is done until the task is completed. So even though the task might not be doing something significant to, uh, uh, Right, or any significant amount of work, it would still occupy a worker slot during the polling process. As the worker slot becomes occupied, the tasks may be queued, resulting in the delayed start times. So this is where uh, the concept of deferable operators is very useful. A deferable operator has an ability to suspend itself and free up a, free up a worker when it knows that it has to wait and hand off the job to uh, resuming it uh, to a trigger. So deferable operator uh, framework has been released as part of Airflow 
So you might be wondering why am I talking all this? Uh, why differable operators and sensors? So one of the major reason I started with was to save my money, save dollars essentially. So there will be massive resource saving for long running operators. For example, it could be spark based operators, S3 sensors and so on. So what I mean, how am I saying this, right? So ideally we conducted an experiment to measure the impact of uh, using differable or async sensors via a triggerer compared to a regular sensors that occupy a worker slot while running. So our hypothesis was that we will observe a lower slot consumption on differable or async operators. So the metrics we used here was the total number of minutes or tasks spends on uh, spends running on a worker slot summed over all the tasks slot uses uh, in seconds. So we used a file sensor, uh, one task waits for a file and another creates a file. We created a separate pool in Airflow. Uh, we, we had used default pool uh, for the file, uh, file sensor and used a new pool to create uh, the files. And we created DAG with thousands of uh, group tasks. So from this benchmarking experiment, we plotted this graph, you can see. Uh, so the number of worker slots waiting increased drastically in case of normal sensors. You can see with the blue uh, line here. And in async sensors, the number of worker slots remained constant, which is represented by the orange color here. So based on these observations, uh, the longer the sensor waits, the more efficient the sync sensor is. We can improve it further by fine tuning airflow configurations as well. So my recommendation would be if you have a sensor that has to wait for a long period of time, you can enable the triggerer and use the sync sen uh, sensors comfortably. Uh, now let me move on to the next slide. Uh, so let's talk about like few important concepts for differable operators. So let's start with trigger. So trigger is essentially a small piece of uh, a asynchronous Python function, which quickly and continuously evaluates a given condition. Thousands of triggers can be run at once in a single process, which is triggerer. So in order for an operator to be differable, it must have it one trigger code that determines when and how the operator tasks are deferred. Uh, so next bit is triggerer. So triggerer is a new service uh, in Airflow, like a scheduler or a worker that runs a, a sync IO uh, event loop in Airflow environment. Running a triggerer is essentially uh, is essential for using differable operators. The triggerer is responsible for running all the triggers and signaling tasks to resume when the condition has been met. Uh, triggerer by design is very highly available. Uh, so now let's move on to the next important uh, bit which is async IO, which I mentioned, right? So async IO is a Python library, which is foundation for multiple uh, asynchronous framework. Uh, it is a core, uh, it is core to differable operators functionality and is used when writing triggers. The next important concept is deferred. So this is like a new Airflow a task uh, state, which is represented by uh, medium purple color uh, in the Airflow UI. I'll showcase that in my demo section of the presentation. Uh, this has been introduced to, in to indicate that the task has been, has paused its execution, released the worker slot, and it has submitted a trigger to be picked up by the trigger process. So how does differable operator work? The task is picked up by a worker 
the task defines a trigger and a defer function of checking some condition uh, to the triggerer. The triggerer runs the task trigger periodically to check whether the condition has been met. Once the condition succeeds, the task is again queued by a scheduler till the task finishes. Right. So next, uh, uh, we can see that with deferable operators, the worker slot can be released while pulling the status of the job. Uh, when the task is deferred, or in when I say deferred, it could be you could understand it as the task is suspended, right? The polling process is offloaded as a trigger to the triggerer, freeing up the worker slot. The triggerer has potential to run many asynchronous polling tasks concurrently, preventing this uh, work to work from work from occupying your worker resources when the terminal status for the job is received the task resumes taking a worker slot while it finishes so visually you can see this in this uh, diagram here right next uh, we will talk about uh, basically some considerations while writing a deferable operators so deferable operators and trigger, uh, triggerers rely on recent async IO features. As a result, uh, it would only work on Python version 3.7 and higher. You also need to ensure that Airflow installation is running with at least one triggerer process as, as well as a normal scheduler. Uh, your operator must differ itself with a triggerer. Uh, if the trigger is part if the trigger is in the core airflow you can use it that's great otherwise you'll have to write one uh, apart from that uh, you also might need to uh, uh, write your async hooks uh, for that operator right uh, which you are trying to implement and there shouldn't be any sync operations inside the triggerer as well so now let's uh, discuss about the structure of deferable operator so usually a deferable operator inherits from base operator class of airflow so this class has a constructor an execute method and execute complete method if, so execute method here uh, fires the task deferred exception and a suspends its execution at some point in the future right and execute complete method uh, basically is responsible wherein like the trigger has finished its execution it would, and it would kind of come back to the worker slot. So if you want to defer, uh, want to trigger deferral at any place in your operator, you can call self.defer, which raises a special exception that Airflow will catch. So here there are like four arguments you can see, right? Uh, so basically there would be like four arguments in case of uh, uh, like defer method, right? First one is a uh, trigger. So trigger is an instance of trigger which you used to defer on. It will uh, be serialized into the database. Uh, next is method name or like it's a callback function, right? So this method name is in, so the method name on your operator you want uh, the airflow to call when it kind of resumes, right? And you can find uh, you can also pass in the additional argument uh, using some quirks. And there's a timeout uh, uh, argument as well, which you can uh, basically specify uh, after which the deferral will be timing out and the task instance fail, fails essentially. So now let's talk about triggers. Trigger is basically written as a class that inherits from this base class which is base triggers. And it has got three methods. First is initializer, uh, which is an init method, which would receive an argument from operator instantiating it. And run is basic, basically our coroutine that uh, runs its logic and yields one or more trigger event instances as a synchronous generator. And there's a serialized uh, method which would return the information needed to reconstruct this trigger. 
as a tuple of class path and return the argument uh, arguments to pass to the initializer which is the init method method so in this code snippet you can see uh, this is a, a simplified version of date time trigger so there are few design considerations to be aware of uh, the run method must be a synchronous one and uh, it should correctly await whenever it does a blocking call or, or or any any sort of a blocking operations uh run must yield uh yield its trigger event and it should not return them so if the if it returns before yielding at uh, at least one event the airflow will consider this as an error and fail any task uh waiting on it if it throws an exception airflow airflow will uh, also fail any dependent task instances as well you should assume that trigger instance may run more than once this can happen when let's say you have a network partition partition occurring or airflow kind of re relaunching the trigger on a separate machine and so on so you must be mindful about the side effect and uh, implement your triggers accordingly uh, uh, so this is one thing which i have personally faced uh, multiple times uh, during my uh, implementation uh, right so for the operators we should we cannot pass a class object to a trigger because uh, the serialized method only supports json serializable object so it will be serialized into the database so it's really important to like pass in uh, the objects to the trigger uh, which is json serializable only uh, now let's talk about hooks uh, hooks provide an interface to interact with external systems but they do not contain any logic for how the system is interacted with operators rely heavily on hooks to interact with any sort of exter external systems so for a sync or deferable operators writing a sync hook that operator will use is really necessary uh, moving on to next slide uh, basically i'll basically do a demo for s3 key sensors a sync so s3 key sensor basically waits for a key to be available on a s3 bucket and i will uh, demonstrate how to do it asynchronously using a deferable s3 key sensor async so in this step i'll uh, basically be doing two things first i'll like demo the example dag for s3 key sensor async and next i'll give you a code walk through for s3 key sensor async this is my airflow dashboard uh, so i have been running airflow locally uh, and so using the docker container so this is my triggerer right you can see right now uh, like it's not running anything right and i have a worker right web server scheduler uh, basically a redis uh, as well as a database right so i have already implemented a s3 key sensor async right so what it would do is it would essentially uh, keep on pulling uh, the s3 bucket for the existence of a particular file uh, and i have i'll be using that uh, in my dag uh, as an example here so this dag first essentially creates a s3 bucket it then uploads the file from local file system to the s3 bucket uh, then it checks for that existence of that particular file and this is async and how do I know that? Because it would show a deferred state, and it should also reflect reflect upon my uh, on my uh, trigger log as well, right? So let me run this uh, task. All right. So uh, now you can see it's creating the bucket. And by the way, this is the deferred state, right? In Papaka. So it is now uploading the file from local file system to S3 bucket. Now it is running, checking for the existence of a particular file. Now it did differ. Now let's check the trigger log. Right. So it's poking for that 
file, right? It did find the file, right? Okay. So it did complete the task. So it will keep on going through the particular uh, tag. So now let's dive deep into the code. Uh, so this S3 key sensor async class uh, inherits from the base operator. The constructor here, the init method, uh, I have added basically the bucket name and um, the key I want to like look for and wildcard match uh, basically for wildcard uh, based matching. And I also look for the AWS connection ID. And like I mentioned, uh, I also have an execute method. So first step, I basically resolve for bucket key and bucket name based on uh, like if they are valid or not, right? And then next, I basically uh, pass it on to uh, trigger, right? And how do I do, do that? I do it using uh, self.defer method, wherein I basically make a call to this S3 uh, key trigger. Right. And in, in as S3 key trigger is also inherited from this base class base trigger. Right. And uh, this is my constructor again. Right. Next, I have the serialized method. And this in this method, right, I basically uh, return the S3 key trigger arguments and the class path and it's quite important to have the right class path i personally have faced this multiple times wherein like this class path was wrong and my airflow log was uh, th throwing some random weird errors and it i took a lot of time to debug and also remember that this should be json serializable right uh, so a class object uh, cannot be essentially passed here right which is not json serializable and I have another coroutine, which is run method here, right? So the first step, I basically get a sync hook, which is S3 key, uh, S3 hook async, which I'll explain it afterwards. Once I got that hook, uh, I basically create a connection, a sync connection, right? And then I check for the existence of a key, right? So again, if the user has passed for the wildcard match, we'll look for the wildcard, wildcard match otherwise uh, will if the user hasn't passed any wildcard match right in that case i'll check for the key right and here i basically await uh, for the existence of that particular file right yeah if i found the file i basically return true uh, otherwise if i get an error i return false right uh, so here if you look at it right uh, if i found that particular file right then i yield this success uh, uh, status as true and whatever ha i have yielded here right it will be like uh, shown as a callback right here in execute complete method wherein i will basically show the corresponding response if it's success or if it if it had failed with certain error i would also show that error here uh, now let's look into the hook. So again, this hook uh, inherits from AWS uh, base hook async, and this AWS base hook async also inherits from AWS base hook, which is a synchronous hook, right? I, what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, getting the uh, creating the async connections using AIO Boto Core. So AIO Boto Core is again again a synchronous library which I have used to uh, create. Uh, AWS connection asynchronously. Now I have this check for key method here, right? Uh, and which I which I had called from the trigger. Uh, here I basically await for the client to wait for this particular object in a particular bucket, right? If it I found that I return true, otherwise I return false. So this essentially is a coroutine, right? So this was like the brief walkthrough of the uh, basically as three uh, key sensor async now let's move on to the next section so few considerations uh, while writing async or differable operators any differable operator implementation needs an api 
to give you a unique identifier in order to pull you for the status in the triggerer. So this does not affect uh, creating a sync sensors as sensors are just pull based, uh, whereas like operators are like you submit something and then you pull for something, right? So it's submit per plus pull based kind of operation. So uh, in the code snippet, uh, you can see that uh, this is a snippet I had taken from Google BigQuery API, uh, BigQuery, I mean, operator. So uh, here at first, like I basically get the, uh, basically I submit the job and I get the job ID and then I basically pass on this job ID to the uh, BigQuery data, get data triggerer. And this triggerer will essentially keep on polling for the status of that job. And your operator must differ itself with a triggerer. If there is a triggerer in the core uh, airflow, uh, that's obviously great. But in case you, if you do not have that, you might need to implement one of them for yourself. Uh, <clears throat> you can also differ multiple times and you can differ before and after your operator does significant work and only differ if certain condition are met. Uh, so this has to be taken care of by your trigger, by your trigger. Uh, any operator can differ. So no special uh, marking on its class is needed or uh, it's not limited to the sensors as well. Uh, one of the important take, uh, things to take care of is you, need, you can see if the official library, library supports a sync. If not, you might need to find <coughs> the third party library which supports a sync for you. So to give you an example, uh, Apache Airflow providers, uh, a Snowflake library installs Snowflake connector Python library as well, which officially supports a sync call for you. But in case of AWS, uh, Boto3 natively does not support a sync call for you. So there's a third party library, which I looked up for, which is AIO Boto Core, which I used in my S3 key sensor async, uh, I mean implementation, which I showed you earlier, right? And uh, this supports the sync implementation. So you might need to look up for the async libraries for yourself. And again, the next important bit is uh, you need to also uh, be uh, cautious about inheriting the sync version of operator wherever possible so that boilerplate code can be avoided uh, while keeping the consist consistency as well. So now let's talk about some pitfalls. Uh, so for, uh, from, the uh, from the operator, we cannot pass in a class object to the trigger because the serialized method will only support the JSON serializable values. Another important uh, like uh, thing to kind of take here is that at times the async implementation might require calling the synchronous function. And for this, we use ascref sync to, sync to async function wrapper for this. Uh, sync to async basically lets async code call a synchronous function uh, which runs which is run in a thread pool and control return to the async coroutine when the synchronous function completes another uh, important point which i want to highlight again which i have already uh, discussed was while implementing the trigger serialized method it's important to use the correct class name otherwise uh, your worker log will show really weird error and it will be really hard to debug. And I've faced this in past a lot of times. So now let's move on to the benefits of uh, differable operators. So the first one definitely is uh, reduced resource consumption, right? Because the number of workers needed to run the task during the period of high concurrency will reduce drastically that will lead you to like save your resources as well as uh, money as well right and resiliency uh, against the restarts so uh, basically 
let's say if uh, your deferred task will not be set to failure state if the trigger needs to be restarted due to the deployment or the infrastructure issues. And it also is useful in events with event based tags as well. So now let's talk about when should we use deferable operators. So we can create async operators for any sync version of operator where we want to do some sort of polling, right? Uh, wherein that ta task takes a certain amount of time to complete and we want to keep on polling the status of that task. Uh, but for an example, we want to create an async operator for, let's say, big query create empty table operator because it will take, take really a uh, small amount of time to run, the, run that, right? Uh, so like important use cases for deferable operators could be like file based operations, any input output bit bound tasks, right? Network backed operations, uh, basically uh, any DB oper operations like uh, executing a long running query, book operations and so on. So one thing to keep in mind is that we want to make our implementation for deferable operators in such a way that these operators are drop-in replacement for its uh, basically non-deferable version of implementation which is already existing there, right? So one example here could be something like this, right? Uh, I basically use S3 prefix sensor async as it is uh, in the code uh, as S3 prefix sensor. So the rest of the code does not need any change as required. Uh, the package astronomer provider repository is a really interesting one. We already have implemented around 24 async operators uh, and sensors, which are publicly available, by the way. Uh, and we are continuously, uh, continuously adding more. And you can please join uh, the OSS community to add more along with us. So uh, also, astronomer provider repository can be a good source of in inspiration. Uh, if you want to get started with deferable operators, I would say. And during this whole, uh, basically, journey of writing deferable operators, there are a couple of uh, links and references which I found personally very useful for me. So one of them was just to understand the concept of uh, uh, async IO in Python, right? The concept of concurrency, and um, again, like various documentations, documentations as well. I have already like shared the links here. Uh, so the first link here uh, is a really nice blog which provides you uh, a perfect analogy uh, to which will help you to understand uh, Python-based uh, uh, async IO uh, library and how it works, right? Uh, so now uh, that was, I think, the whole talk uh, about deferable operators. Um, let's move on to like Q&A section. I'd be more than happy to answer any of the questions which you have along the way.